Hello, salam. Hello. Waalaikum salam. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you I'm doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for being <coughs> part of this webcast. Uh, thank you. I'm, I apologize. I'm under the weather, so I'll be coughing every now and then, so I apologize for oh. that. <laughs> <No>. <coughs> okay, so thank you. Hello, world. This is your host, Gulmeki Saleh, the founder and creative director of the Golden Tree of Goodness. You're watching Listen to Understand with Gulmeki. Through this webcast, we want to promote goodness through understanding by empowering our audience to break the cycle of hate by creating an environment where there's understanding amongst all people through the universal message of the golden rule, which is to treat others as one wants to be treated. Today, we have a very special guest who was with us last year, and she did a great talk, Rabab Elma, who was, and she will speak about imposter syndrome and self-doubt, a talk on overcoming self-sabotage and feeling like a fraud. So if you know someone who is like that or, you know, they could benefit with, from it, why don't you share this webcast with them so they could also <clears throat> join? So Rabab Elma has a has a master's in business administration and in clinical psychology. She's licensed in, ma licensed in marriage and family therapy. Rabab is a screen-free parenting certified leader. She's heavily involved with the communities around her and through her own webcast that she does on her Facebook page. A fun fact about Rabab, she loves reading, exercising, and solitude. So welcome again, Rabab, and thank you everyone for joining in. Thank you, thank you, Kolmaki. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So can you please tell us more? I just went on a brief introduction about you. Can you share some other interesting points about your life and yourself? Um, thank you for this nice introduction, Kolmaki. I really appreciate it. <coughs> uh, and. Um, it's actually a pleasure being here with you on the show. Uh, You're welcome. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you. Thank you. So I, um, uh, what else? Um, so I, I, I have a, an office in Wayne, uh, outside of Philadelphia. And I also have a, a location in the northeast of Philadelphia. I started it when uh, the refugees started to uh, come, in, uh, come in in 2016. And it was difficult for them to come to the office in Wayne. So I, I used to see them uh, then in uh, Philadelphia. And I continue to have that location over there for the underprivileged, yeah. or for people who uh, are in Philadelphia or cannot come to the uh, suburb. I also have a, a daughter. She is uh, a senior now at the University of Pennsylvania. She's studying biomedical engineering. So it's uh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> So say you like loves uh, solitude. How does that help? Well, I think it's important to have uh, alone time to reflect and to um, my the nature of my work that I I meet with people a lot, and of course, uh, it's an energy. So you always take on people energy, and you need to really be able to release that energy somehow and take care of yourself. It's a self care, so it's important okay. to um, be able to. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's important to be able to rejuvenate yourself, to be able to help people. Um, solitude helped me, uh, being by myself, uh, mm -hmm. trying to have this alone time. I think it's important for everyone to have this alone time to reflect and think and um, enjoy your own company. Because actually we are the one person that we will spend the rest of our life with. Sure. If I don't enjoy, yeah, yeah. If I don't enjoy my own company, how would I expect someone else to enjoy my own company? Sure, <laughs> <laughs> you're very. Right. Even that's something we don't do a lot today. Mm -hmm. We don't take the time to just sit alone and contemplate, reflect on yes. things in our lives or things we learned, and take. That's how wisdom grow. You know, like I realize that you know, for, for us to increase our wisdom, we need to have that alone time and reflect on our lives absolutely so so today you want to speak about imposter imposter syndrome and self-doubt can you explain uh, more to us what <clears throat> imposter syndrome means i think this is a psychological phenomenon that all of us 
experience when we feel that um, we're inadequate or incompetent or we feel that we are a failure um, despite the evidence that we are successful like I see that in my, with my clients at my practice uh, with professionals men and women and um, some of them are really successful a lot of them actually are very successful in their careers but this uh, some of them ex executives, uh, CEOs, wherever their positions are, uh, they still feel inadequate or incompetent or they feel they are fraud and they will get caught or exposed at some point. And that creates a lot of anxiety for people and a lot of negative feelings. Uh, feeling that you are a uh, fraud. <coughs> when we feel, when someone feels that they are fraud or in inadequate, this will actually um, have them or render them a feeling that they are unable to celebrate their achievements because they feel they're fraud. So mm -hmm. they, feel, they live in the cycle of feeling fraud, inadequate, uh, and also cannot really celebrate their achievements. So everyone is really fascinated with their record of, they have track record of success, but they're unable to celebrate that because they feel that they are fraud or inadequate. So I think- How does- Go ahead. Yeah. Go, how does that happen? How does one become to that position where they feel that way? Well, um, there are several ways that you can uh, um, detect that if someone or few or, or me, someone has that. Like you would feel that um, whatever happened, success I had, it was just by chance. Or, um, yeah, I did do whatever, but I got help. People helped mm -hmm. me. And that's why it's not only my effort. It's not just my success. Um, and, and that's an issue because we, we all get help, you know, with, with, uh, throughout our life. But who's the common denominator here? It's you. You are the main player in your own life. So, sure. <coughs> excuse me. So that feeling, uh, self-doubt, um, it has mm -hmm. so many re uh, reasons. Some, some of them comes from childhood, from the way they were, were raised, from whatever events happen in their lives. So I think as a therapist, I will go deep and I will explore with the person and we'll have this conversation around where does this feeling come uh, about? Where does it come from? Some people will say that I'm locked out. It's, it was just a lock. Uh, I'm successful because of my luck. You know, so it's not, mm -hmm. they don't attribute mm -hmm. that to their own efforts and their own hard work. Um, some of them, some people will think that, okay, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Mm -hmm. But they forget that there is always unique qualities for a particular person. Each one of us have unique qualities and have a unique story. Each one of us has a unique story that cannot be duplicated. So it's, it's important yeah. to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. um, again, I talked about, I got a lot of help. We all got a lot of help. Like when we were growing up, our parents helped us, our teachers, our mentors, our coaches, if we have therapists, of course, yeah. So it's important to, to recognize that. <clears throat> so some people will say, I had connections. But even if yeah. you have connections, if you don't have, if you don't really produce something, you are not going to be successful. You're not going to sure. be acknowledged. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, I, I mentioned also people don't recognize, uh, they don't celebrate their small wins or their, uh, their wins or their success in their lives. And sometimes they th just think, oh, just people are being nice to me. But people are not going to lie to tell you that you are successful. You need to, you know, produce evidence and they have proof of your success and you have a, a track record of, 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 of uh, achievements. And, sure. um, <clears throat> so there are a lot of um, reasons or maybe symptoms that people will, uh, uh, <coughs> excuse me, or maybe some people will say, I just winged it, it just happened for me. Because, but you cannot really wing something all, all your life. So I think it's important to, ha again, have this conversation with someone on where it is coming from and how to really rectify or de to deal with that anxiety or that feeling 
Thank you. Uh, those who are watching, watching, welcome to our show. We have Rabab Elma, who's a psychologist, and she's talking about the imposter syndrome and self-doubt. So Rabab, our next question is, what are the signs we should look for if we feel one of our, even us, either us or someone who we <clears throat> love, have self-doubt in them? Well, as I mentioned earlier, these are the, um, you will feel that people are always anxious, have anxiety. People always question what they are doing. Uh, they, are, they don't believe they are successful. Uh, they feel that they are, um, um, they're fraud or they are, uh, <coughs> excuse me, this is not their success or someone else did it for them. Or, so you see the signs and some people have it as bad as panic attacks. Wow. Yeah. Is that a serious? Well, it yeah. depends on the, on, the, on, the, on the stressors in their lives and what's going mm -hmm. on. But some people, yeah, <clears throat> will come to therapy after they have uh, episodes of panic attacks. And mm -hmm. then we try to break it down to see what's going on. And sometimes, most of the time, I see this one of the reasons why they are having panic attacks. Yeah. Of course, Can there are other reasons. There are other reasons. Of course, it's not the only one. But this is one of the reasons for some people. And because it's the topic for today, so I will actually highlight that. <clears throat> Is, could it be from being want to, wanting to be perfect? Is that, could, could that be one of the reasons? Yeah, maybe some, of course. <coughs> some, sometimes people think that they, failure is not an option. But actually mm -hmm. failure, we need to celebrate failure, even though sometimes it's difficult. But if we look at failure as an opportunity, as, as a lesson, of, so whatever sure. we were doing, uh, now I learned that this does not work, so I will not do it again. But uh, yeah. we need to keep reminding ourselves that this is a lesson mm -hmm. and it doesn't, it, that action or that uh, path failed, it doesn't mean that you are, as a person, is a failure. Mm -hmm. And we need to recognize that unless we try and fail, we, don't, we will not know what works. Sure. We, again, yeah. because each person's uh, story is different. And I think <clears throat> this goes back for us women, if we want to talk about women, the way we were raised, um, we were raised to be, um, um, we need to be perfect. We cannot really express our feelings or our opinion. We need to obey. We need to listen to the elderly. Uh, we need to respect them. And I, of course, we need to respect the elderly and, 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 and be, um, uh, be, be respectful in their presence, but does not mean that I can disagree with you respectfully. You know what I mean? But we were not, a lot of people were not raised that way. Mm -hmm. Be, disagreeing and, and saying, you're voicing the opinion, your opinion is very important. A lot of people were not raised that way, especially for girls. They were uh, raised to be good girls. And, uh, and, and that can, be, can contribute to this feeling of feeling a failure, uh, to doubting the self, uh, that I don't deserve it, or um, I'm a fraud or inadequate, whatever it is. Um, that sometimes stems from whatever happens in the person's life and the way they were brought up. Wow, that's such great information. <clears throat> you know. um, I see it when I, I used to teach. I, I, I used to see it in some children. And then when I would meet the parent, I, underst I understood where they got that from. Uh, the, the parent would not accept an A-. minus. Yes. That's seriously worth it. There is no... Uh, With my... Yeah. I'm like... I'm, I, yes, I, I, when, if I see them working hard, they're studying, they're doing their homework, and if it's not an A, I'm all good. <laughs> you know, I'm, I don't want that stress. I'm like, yeah, that's, like, that's when the self-doubt starts coming in. Will my mom be happy with me? You know, I'm not good enough. Yeah. All these. Yeah, when you get the 9 out of 10, when the, when, yeah. why didn't you get a 10? You know what I mean? Or what happened yeah. to the other grade? Or all of this, you know, that the subtle messages, or sometimes not subtle, very uh, clear messages that uh, we, uh, we don't expect or accept below perfect. True. And then the child grows up and they feel that uh, he has or she has to be perfect, otherwise they will not be accepted. And that would put a tremendous amount of pressure. <clears throat> Yeah, it's true. So when they become like a, this uh, CEO or VP for a certain company, 
and mm -hmm. all the projects went well except that one project that did not really give the, the result that he or she was expecting then this is a failure mm -hmm. that means i am a yeah. failure you know labeling the self yeah we shouldn't be mean to ourselves right we shouldn't be mean to others nor to ourselves well we have to yeah actually yeah we sometimes we exert a lot of compassion towards other but not towards ourselves yeah that's true yeah <clears throat> we can't it, but we forget yeah. ourselves it's, it's it's having that balance caring about others and at the same time <coughs> yeah self absolutely self-care self-love self-respect can you also share us a, uh, with us a story about how you helped yourself or someone else who had um, who had self doubt? Well, I will talk about my story. <clears throat> so I was raised in Saudi Arabia. Um, mm -hmm. I, I was I was born in Syria, but raised in Saudi Arabia. And I was raised in a country where uh, women are girls in general don't have a lot of rights and they don't re they are not really have a lot of freedom to do anything in comparison to to boys mm -hmm. so you were always i always grew up with this environment that um, a man should be with me to do anything or otherwise i can't do it on my own so when i came to um the united states and then i am living here um by myself with my daughter and then I realized that there's a lot of things that I was in the beginning unable uh, to do on my own or I'm afraid to do because I'm inadequate you know because we it was instilled in, in, in inside of us that the girls are not supposed to do anything on their own or they are not supposed to really um, pursue anything without someone's someone else's approval so I had to work on my own self um, quite some time, for a long time, to be able to overcome this and to, uh, um, uh, to study on my own, to work, to uh, have my own practice, to take a decision to, take, to leave pharmaceutical industry and stick to, to, to therapy and psychology, because I used to do both. I used to do pharmaceutical industry, I was uh, for, for the longest time, and therapy. So uh, to be able to take that move and to decide for myself without someone else's. That took a long time of work and therapy for my own self. And um, um, that actually what led me to, th to psychology because I wanted to <clears throat> um, be able to um, do what I want to do on my own. I wanted to be um, a better parent for my daughter. And that what led me to psychology. I didn't think that it would be my profession. I studied it just because I want to be a better parent and a better person and know how to navigate the world on my own. But then I fell in love with psychology and I realized this is what I wanted to do. Wow, amazing story. And I'm very proud of you. You've Thank come you. a long way. And I, I, I say I've been seeing her Bob work and her work is amazing and she's helping everyone as much as she can. She's involved in many communities, um, helping them bringing the best out of them, giving a positive mindset and telling them you could do it, you could bring a change to yourself. So she is a truly an amazing per person. Thank you. Um, now tell us, of course, <laughs> it has to connect with my golden rule. <laughs> How does a golden <clears throat> rule go against having the self, you know, having the imposter syndrome or self-doubt? So let's first define what is a golden rule. What is the golden rule? So the golden rule is to do unto others as we would do have them do to unto us. So uh, if we want someone to do to to deal with us the way we want them to deal with, to deal with them, so how what how where do we how do we position ourselves in this map? So if you go back even in our religion. Uh, when, 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 the, when the prophet says, uh, you love to your brother what you love to yourself. So I always start with one thing. We need to define, in, it, it's always in our community, we actually focus on the first sentence of this hadith. <coughs> Excuse me. To love for our brother or sister what we love ourselves. But do we take the time to define what do we really like for ourselves? in order to know what we're going to love for, our, for others? 
if you take that, it's, yeah. if you take that, this is a golden rule in our religion. Yeah. yeah. And this applies to other religions, also Christianity or Judaism or other religions. So when we want to love for others, like we love for ourselves, define first what you want for yourself. Take your time and define it. True. So once we define that for ourselves, then I'm able to define what I would like from our, from my sister mm -hmm. or brother. Sure. Yeah. What a great point. <clears throat> and then, so, so you, want, you, you want your brother or your sister to treat you with compassion. You want them to treat mm -hmm. you with kindness, with love, with collaboration, with uh, empathy. Okay? This is what you want from your brother or sister. That means mm -hmm. this is what you like for yourself. Mm -hmm. The first, we need to do it for ourselves. Because if you read in, the, in all the uh, uh, um, scriptures and the Quran, and every, they will say that do it to anfusakum, first yourself and then others. Mm -hmm. In every single, if you read in the Quran, and I'm sure if you read in the Bible or in the, in the, in the Torah or all the other books, <clears throat> it always advises people that you need to take care of yourself first and then others. And Fusakum mm -hmm. on yourself and their families. So it's this is across the board. But I, 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 in our culture, we always it's it's a it's a uh, it's a collective orientation, if you will. So we think of the society or the community before thinking of ourselves or a, from individualistic perspective. And some people will look at it as you are being selfish. <clears throat> but there is a difference between being selfish and self-centered. I will be selfish when I need to take care of myself and I will tell people no because I need to protect my boundaries and I need to protect, uh, uh, to keep my sanity and I need to take care of myself. This mm -hmm. is different than self-centeredness when I don't care about others. So being selfish sometimes and saying no or change schedules or, or uh, 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 be very strict about your boundaries because you are actually uh, uh, caring for yourself, that's important. Actually, this is encouraged because you want to uh, save yourself from being burned out. True. Yeah. So, so it's a balance and it's actually encouraged. It's always mm -hmm. about the, bal the balance. And True. our responsibility mm -hmm. first is towards our creator, second towards ourselves. It's always for yourself because we will be judged alone. We will be asked alone. You will be, it's always about, so, so it's always this, first of all, your relationship with your creator and then your creation relationship with yourself and then with the others. Because once you fix the relationship with yourself, then we're able to fix or work on the relationship with others. Sure. But it always starts with the self. Yeah. You so have that, to have that. So that, that, that ties it to, to, to the golden rule. Yeah, that was a very great uh, point you made there. We have to first work on ourselves in order to apply the good. We need That's to know what we want, how to, for people to know us and understand. Us. Yes. That's when the good rule comes into action. Yes. Yeah, it's also, you know, when you improve yourself, you um, work on yourself, you're also helping humanity because you, you're going to be bringing less problems into the school you go to or into the job you work at. Because you're better improving, self-improvement. You're having a better self-improvement of yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you come into the workforce or wherever you may be around people, you're a better person. You're not that negative person, closed-minded person that always have self-doubt because now you decide to uh, improve yourself, Yes, which is great. <coughs> giving us great uh, tips and uh, ways and understanding on this self-doubt and imposter syndrome. So how critical do you believe it is to have this knowledge and it applies during our times? Especially, you know, with social media, everything is, our, there's no, hardly any privacy now, you know, how, how so how is it important? Um, first, when you say it's hardly any privacy, I have to disagree with that because I think we control what we put on our uh, social media. And because we control what we put on our social media, so you see people put all the nice, lovely stories about mm -hmm. uh, someone's life. <clears throat> and sometimes that can be deceiving in terms of, oh, okay, everyone is happy except for me. 
but this is not the truth because we all go uh, through ups and downs. And people show, choose to put uh, happy stories and happy pictures on uh, Facebook mm -hmm. or choose not to put anything. It, it, this is totally mm -hmm. the person's choice. Um, I think it's important to keep um, ourselves in check in terms of what we allow to really penetrate our system and what we actually block out. Mm -hmm. True. <clears throat> so um, it's our choice always to be to have the control and mm -hmm. to be uh, able of to be in control in our emotional reactivity or our emotions. How we choose to react or think of something we saw or we met or we encountered, and <clears throat> and I think there are several ways to, to, to deal with all of these feelings. We need, to, when we share it with someone or a, a, a therapist or a, a clinician or someone with a confidant or someone that they will tell us the truth as it is, it is important. Mm 